Alright, so there are some things that as a game developer, you just gotta know how to do. There are features that when added into your project, they give a completely different feel to your game. But there's one specific thing that will take your game to the next level. That's right, I'm talking about gamma weapons. I'm, uh, I'm talking about weapons. And gamma. Welcome back, in this video I'll teach you how I set up and script my weapons whenever I want to add weapons into any game. I'll teach you the quote unquote correct way to quote unquote weld a weapon to a character. Also, I'll teach you how to make the player spawn with said weapon in case that's something you want to do. This is actually surprisingly easy to do if you know the basics of coding and a little bit of studio, but I personally struggled a lot to get this right. But then again, I'm kinda lacking brain cells, so and I'll make you a deal bro, if this video ends up getting 150 likes or more, I'll make a part 2 in which I'll teach you how to make the weapon rest in your hip or on your back and also how to do a toggle animation. So yeah, if you're interested in that, then you know what to do. But no pressure though. Let's get started, shall we? Step 1 is gonna be hella quick. First, we're gonna make sure the weapon is set up correctly. I'm gonna be using this sword as an example. All you gotta do is A. Make sure that no parts of the weapon are anchored. B. Create a new part that will act as a handle in the animation. A tip I can give you with this is to make sure that the front face is facing in the same direction as the blade. I know some models might have the handle built separately, just like mine actually, but even so, I like to create a part that will act as a handle in the animation. What do I mean by this? Instead of taking as a reference this part when the animation is deciding which part to grab, the animation will take this part, which will be invisible in the end result, of course. This makes it easier to identify where exactly you want the character to grab the weapon, or at least it makes it easier for me. And I find it a lot easier to animate when I do this. It'll all make sense later, just keep watching. Also make sure all of the parts of your weapon have can collide equal to false and massless equal to true. This is so you don't get any weird physics with the weapon. And last step C of part one is to weld every single single part of the weapon to this newly created part and also rename the newly created part to handle and we're done with step one now that the weapon's ready, we gotta attach the weapon to the character. How are we gonna do this? Well, if you were thinking about well constraints, think again broski. Well constraints are trash for weapons because you can't manipulate them in animations. What do I mean by this? Let's say you wanna make an animation in which your character makes a thrust move with a sword, right? I have here a dummy with a sword welded to its right arm. Let's try making a thrusting animation. Well, um, I got the arm movement down, but I can't really point the sword in the right direction. So unless you want your weapons animation to look hella stiff, don't use worlds or world constraints. They're fucking <gasps> trash for animations. Instead, what you want to use and what's actually way better are Motor 6Ds. I have a dummy here with the Motor 6D set up and don't worry if you don't know what Motor 6Ds are or how they work or how to set them up. I'll explain it in a bit. Just bear with me here. Let's start making an animation with this dummy and see what happens. Three hours later. Oh, well, you look at that. You can actually manipulate the weapon in the animation. So what? Or motor 60s yeah i am reading all that basically motor 60s are welds that can be animated i i know that probably doesn't mean much but you don't really need to know the technical definition at least you know what it's used for now so how do we set up the motor 60 very easy no need to trip about it it's very similar to how you set up welds once you understand it you're gonna see that it's actually way easier to set up than welds first Let's take a look at the properties of worlds. You get part 0 and part 1. Part 0 is the part that's going to be followed by part 1. Now let's take a look at the Motor 60's properties. It has more properties, but if you take a close look, you'll see that it shares properties with worlds, part 0 and part 1. They essentially serve the same purpose as in worlds. So let's set those two properties up first. When using Motor 60's, make sure your weapon is inside the character. Also make sure no part of your weapon is anchored, otherwise your player won't be able to move. With this said, when dealing with weapons, you set part 0 to be the right arm or the left arm. I'm gonna go with the right arm and part 1 is going to be the handle. Once you do that, you're gonna notice that the weapon automatically moves to the location of the right arm. Now, you might be saying, but look, this is what I want my weapon to be like that. Yeah, no sh let me finish my explanation, thank you. To get the weapon rotated and positioned exactly how you want it to be, you actually have to set up the property C1, which I'm pretty sure stands for C-frame. If it doesn't, don't cook me in the comments. But that's beside the point. If you don't know what C-frame is, C-frame is kind of like the combination of position and orientation in relation to a part. If you start messing around with this, you're going to notice that the weapon will start moving in relation to the player's right arm or whatever part zero is. So you just got to play with the position and orientation property of C1 until you get it right. In my case, these were the final values, in your case, in 
might look something completely different depending on the weapon and how you set it up. The important thing here is that it looks right. Now that this is done, we can actually start animating and as you can see, we can finally manipulate the weapon inside the animation. That's cool and all, but how do we set it up for the player to actually use? Alright, so in order for you to set up this a lot easier, we're gonna be needing something called a C-frame value, which lets you store a C-frame inside its value. Yeah, I guess that was kind of obvious. If you don't understand what this is, just watch I. Just insert the C-frame value inside the weapon, and what you'll store inside it are the position value and the orientation value that are inside the motor 60. So just copy and paste them into the C-frame value. It'll make sense in a minute, okay? Just bear with me here. Once that's done, you're gonna go ahead and put a copy of this weapon in replicated storage so that the script can find it a lot easier. And now we finally get to scripting. Whenever I want something to spawn with the character, I create a script that detects each time a character is respawned. Let me show you what I mean. Inside service script service, insert a script and call it player edit manager. Of course, you don't have to name it that. That's just what I like to call it. But anyways, once you create the script, you're going to want to get the player service by doing local players equal game colon get service players. We'll also be needing replicated storage and the weapon inside that. So get that as well. Local replicated storage equals game get service re replicated storage. Local weapon equal replicated storage wait for child weapon. Now we're going to attack each time a player is added you gotta do this to get the character of the player that has been added into the game so you do players dot player added colon connect function player player is going to be the newly added player press enter and inside this you want to write player dot character appearance loaded colon connect function char char is going to be the newly spawned character press enter and now whatever you put inside this will run whenever a new character from a player is spawned so you can use this for anything even if it's not really weapons all right so we want the player to start with the weapon in his hand so go ahead and get the player's right arm by doing local right arm equals char colon find first child right arm by the way right arm is spelled differently in r15 so you might want to verify that before doing this next clone the weapon we're going to replicate the storage local cloned weapon equals weapon colon clone why clone it and not just use the variable we created before if you do that it'll be one time use only since we're going to move it outside of replicated storage towards inside the character which will be in the workspace right and after one player takes it from here this won't really exist anymore so we're cloning it so it always stays there so we can always find it hopefully that makes sense get the handle that's inside the cloned weapon also get the c-frame value trust this is gonna be very useful now we set its parent to the character and we're gonna create a new motor 6d so that it's actually attached to your character local motor 6d equals instance dot new motor 6d that's how you create a motor 6d set the parent of the motor 6d to the cloned weapons handle and now we're gonna modify the properties of the motor 6d to really attach it so part zero is gonna be the character's right arm and part one is gonna be the cloned weapons handle and we're still missing the c1 property which is a c frame value right or a c frame property remember that we actually modified that when attaching the weapon to the me earlier yeah we're gonna do exactly the same thing but in a script now but it's gonna be way easier because you already saved the values that you'll need in the c frame value inside the weapon that's why i made you put those values inside there so that now we can just set the c1 property to the value of the c frame value and it'll all be set if you still don't understand what's going on whatever the value property of the c frame value is equal to is gonna set the c1 property of the motor 6d equal to that value hopefully that makes sense now if we were to play the thrust animation with the character Character, boom it now rotates the weapon as well mission accomplished remember if you want to know how to make the weapon rest in your hip and also the toggle animation then 150 likes or no video also we've got a discord server first link in the description so if you're interested in that you know what to do this said keep leveling up bro be safe and i'll see you when i see you peace